Hi guys, you're back with another one of Arbiter's uh, Gary's Mod Tutorials. Today, we're f well, finally, we're going to be covering auto turrets, which is something that there's plenty of on the internet, so if my tutorial doesn't really do it for you, go check someone else's out and I'm sure you'll get the hang of it. Um, essentially, to begin with, you're going to need three of these little blocks, and I'll explain what each of them does. Um, right. This base plate is essentially just going to be a mount, so this is something that you can weld to the floor, and it just stays stationary or wherever you put it. So I'm just going to weld this to the floor. <coughs> and essentially this is never supposed to move. Right. Now the second plate here is going to be something that will spin the turret left and right. So this, all I'm going to do is axis it. Um, the friction is at about 15 at the moment. Um, don't know, collide it. Um, now I do is on the centre axis is always just snap to wherever they go. Now you do that is put on the centre of that and you can see that this spins quite quite slowly. Nothing that fancy. <coughs> but that's it. Um with this the I'm gonna axis it to this plate to begin with. Um and then I'm gonna ball socket each edge and that's gonna be a hinge almost. So on the top corners of each side And then I'm just going to whip out the axis tool again. If you press R, it undoes an axis, which means that now, there you can see, it moves up or down. And all this is going to do is control whether the target it's aiming at is going up a height or down a height. Well, it won't go down a height, obviously, because it can't go below flat. So, what we have now is something that spins and something that goes up, up or down. And, of course, it stays, sta it stays stationary. Now, if I just weld these things in place. So, we're going to have to have something that goes both left and right and moves up or down. Now we're going to tackle left and right first but first of all we need a target finder and a beacon sensor obviously to find targets and output beacons. All we're going to do is output distance and bearing on the beacon sensor and of course that's not going to go flat is it? I have to spin this round. There and that's facing straight Oops, that's facing straight forward. Right, now we need a target finder, um, we're going to set the range to as big as possible, uh, that's 100,000, um, I'll set it to target players for now, so it targets me, and there's me, oh, I think I've, no I haven't, okay, so what we need first is for it to go left and right, now, there's, there's two ways you can do this really, there's just a normal sign gate that goes left and right, or there's a delta gate, now I'm going to use the delta method now, like for now, although this is more complex and it probably won't make sense to you. So, sorry if it doesn't make any sense, but I'll try my best. So, what a delta basically does is it'll find the difference, or the change in difference. It does something along those lines. You you would think my physics knowledge would help me, but not really. Right. <coughs> so, it'll find the change in, in bearing, usually, but that's not enough as it is. So, we need to add two multiply gates one there and one there and then we need an add gate just there now what we need we have if we wire this up at the moment we need to wire the delta gate up to bearing and then multiply the delta by a constant value I'm going to put in the sec and also multiply that bearing so what we have in here is the bearing being multiplied and also the change in bearing being multiplied by something now these values you can play with <coughs> but um, Tricky from Tricky's Tutorials said that um, the best values you can have are 10 and 2 for uh, for these. So I'm going to set this as 10 and I'm going to set this as 2. That's 12. 10. Okay. And then I'm just going to put that in there. Um, that constant value will probably have more values added to it as time goes on. But anyway. Right. I think I'm not sure which way around these go. So it's, uh, you, I'll probably be wrong. But I think the bearing straight from the target finder is 2 and the delta needs to be multiplied by 10 so there we are which if, we were, if I was to wire this up we'd see we've got two values here and all they need to be do is add it together and that will give well that just adds a value and all this needs to be done is wired up to two thrusters um, of about a thrust of 10 was it force multiplier? 
Unfortunately, yeah, yeah, about a multiplier of 10. And just stick these on the back, the back right, and the front left. And then these need to be wired up to the add gate. And then hopefully, it, it's a bit jerky, I think I've got that the wrong way around. Right, uh, set the thrusters to about 7. And then reset this back so that that's multiplying by 10. No, that that's multiplied by 2. And that's multiplied by 10. I, to I told you I'd get it wrong. Right. Ah, oh, that's better. There you can see. It's following me around pretty nicely. I do find that at longer distances, it's not as accurate. Like if I was over here, it would it would bear off like there. So you need to play with those settings a bit. But at close range, it works fairly nicely. Okay, now what we've got there is just something that faces me, generally, most of the time without doing that. Um, right. Now we need something that will also... If I fix that... That will also aim up and down. So what we're going to do is we're going to get a wire hydraulic. And the hydraulic is going to go from there to there. And we're going to place the controller at the back here. Right. Now, there's no real way we can make this go accurately at a height. All we can do is make it go up and down depending on the on the bearing. <coughs> so what we need is we need an accumulator. Um, that's in time, sorry an accumulator there and that basically it's going to accumulate the elevation if you cycle through the outputs and that is the length so what we have is here is that it's not really doing anything because so if I was to go up a bit now immediately you can see a problem in that it's not moving there you can see now it's getting up to my height but before when I was down here it wasn't doing anything because the accumulator was going negative and it was constantly accumulating. So what we need is we need values to limit it between, well, zero essentially and the maximum, which is usually at about 85. So what we're going to do is we're going to set a constant value on the back to have four values, and we're going to have um, one and 85. And that's and what we're going to do here is we're now going to put in a system in place so that the accumulator, if it ever goes past those two values, will reset. So, we need two comparison gates. We need a greater than, and we're going to stick that there, and we need a less than. I'm going to stick that there. Now, obviously we want if either of these is active to reset, so we're going to use a logic gate, and it's going to be the or, any, gate. If you know anything about computing, you know that an or puts an output of 1 if any of its inputs is 1. So we're just going to set A and B to that and then reset on this. So the greater than gate we want if the accumulator is greater than 85 to reset. And we want the less than if the accumulator is less than 1 to reset as well. And you can see that the accumulator is 1 now. So as you can see if I was to go up now it should still... oh. The, the, accum the elevation isn't... What's gone wrong? Maybe, okay, maybe if we set that as zero. There we go. Okay, so the less than gate needs to be set as zero and not one. Okay, and there you can see it's just aiming directly at me, and if I was to go too far, it should reset. There you can, yeah, that's reset. So it gets to a certain point and then it resets because it can't go any further. Which means that now, if I unfreeze this, this should follow me about and aim at me pretty much precisely. Now, I'm going to put a laser on the front. I can use turrets or, I don't know, igniters or whatever you fancy. So I'm just going to, oh, I'm going to yeah, I'll put, I'll put a turret on the front. Um, I'll take the damage down, just so I indicate it, but I don't die. And you can see that's slightly off centre, so yeah, that's about centre. And then I'm going to no collide the turret. And then I'm just going to weld it on, making sure. So all I'm going to do now is set fire to that output there. And we can see that if we unfreeze it, it should... There. It starts to shoot. It's a bit, like I said, it's a bit off at long distances. It should self right itself, but if I was to move over here... You can see it's... There we go. It's killed me. And that 
there we go. That's the auto turret for you. It's a bit spazzy, I admit, and it's a bit unruly. Um, <coughs> but for, just just fiddle around with the settings, and you should hopefully get it. Um, I'm going to continue this tutorial in a bit more of a practical, well, I say practical, in a bit more of a fun sense, as fun as you can get with a turret. But this is it for now. So until next time, goodbye.